name's Maggie, and I work at ThinkSelf. I'm the Community Engagement Advocate. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Lisa. This is my name sign. Uh, I work at the Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf, MSAD, uh, here in Faribault. Thanks, Maggie, for inviting me. Thank you for joining us. So today we decided to make a video and I invited you to talk with me because you're a good and a professional counselor. And we know there's a lot of changes happening in today's world. So we want to talk about what the grief process looks like and what we can do with those feelings that may, you know, come up. We read a good article about this topic um, related to grief and the emotions that accompany it, if that is in fact what we are feeling all right now. It's written by a person named Scott Veronito. Uh, people are having a lot of conflicting emotions, and I wanted to ask you, are those feelings grief? Yes. Grief is over the loss of normalcy. Things like being able to go to work every day, or going to sporting events with your children, um, or just going out with your friends and socializing. All the usual activities that are part of your everyday life, suddenly those all came to a halt. So, of course, it's normal to grieve that you lost the things that you considered normal. Yeah. And also, we don't know what the next few weeks or even the next few months might look like. A lot of things are very unsure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's just a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of those social contacts, um, physical touch, everything has been so greatly reduced. I don't think we realized how much we interacted with each other until we couldn't. And I think that's part of what we're all feeling right now, that collective grief. We're all going through this together, and yeah, it's not normal for us. Yeah, right. Especially when we're being told that we have to stay home. You know, that's, that's really discombobulating. Like, yeah, it's a big change. Yeah, true. So there are five stages of grief, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they operate in a nice sequential order. Sometimes you bounce back and forth between all of them. And the final stage is acceptance, but until you reach that one, you often vacillate between them. I'll speak more about what each stage looks like. The first stage is denial. That is a very normal reaction to a situation. Like, for example, when the governor announced recently that schools would be closed for two weeks, many people said, oh, okay, well, it's just two weeks, nothing more will happen. You know, it'll be fine for two weeks and then it'll go back to normal life after that. That's denial. It's a way of coping with a sudden shock or loss. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like minimizing your feelings, right? Is that the same idea? Exactly. It's saying things like, oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Then the second stage is anger. So when that denial feeling starts to go away, that's when the pain of the shock and loss and change suddenly cause you to feel anger. You start looking for blame. For example, my life has changed, and now um, I have to work from home. Mm -hmm. And I have a shorter fuse. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I notice that I start to feel really angry at things, and no one is to blame, but it's just how I respond to um, the grief at this time. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Then the third stage is bargaining. So you might say, well, what if I, this is a very normal way of temporarily relieving that grief reaction. Like, uh, for example, you know, if you say, what if I change up my room? Like, you know, paint the walls, um, you know, then everything will be okay. We'll be fine. 
it just sort of gives you temporary hope. Yeah, like a buffer. Yeah, I've I noticed a lot of people are doing home projects right now. And that's something I've noticed. It's kind of cool. I wonder, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That can be healthy. It's part of the grieving process. You know, you do what you need to do uh, in order to make you feel like you can move through these stages. Hmm, yeah. So, are there unhealthy ways to move through it as well? Oh, yeah, there are some unhealthy examples, um, such as drinking more as a way to escape. Um, yeah, some people feel like... Uh, Uh, really, everybody responds to this differently. Mm -hmm. There isn't necessarily a right or wrong way. What's important is that you acknowledge if you're doing too much of one particular thing, and if that's the case, it may be time to take a step back and switch to a healthier option. Yeah, plus, you don't want to bottle up all those emotions. I mean, it's okay to express how you feel. Yeah, yeah. What does that look like, do you think? I mean, what kind of things can you do? I was actually getting to that next. Uh, expressing your feelings is really kind of my forte. I'm very big on getting feelings out. Uh, I know a lot of people keep them in, uh, but there are a lot of ways you can choose to express yourself. It could be through writing, chatting with another person, uh, or if you prefer to be on your own, like in a dark room, even to sit there and cry. That's perfectly okay. Or even if you want to cry in front of people, it's okay to let other knows, people know how you feel too. Everyone deals with different feelings in a variety of ways. There's no right or wrong. Again, it's just important that you're not doing something to hurt anyone else or yourself. You can let someone else know that you need to talk about this. Yeah, it's, you know, everyone needs to be heard and validated. That's so important. Yeah, you can let someone know that you just want them to listen to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not that you want them to fix anything. Um... Yeah, you just want someone to say that, you know, that they get you. And most likely, that will cause you to feel relief. Just knowing that someone's heard and understood you. Yeah, just take this weight off my shoulders a little bit, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Sharing the burden. Yep. Yeah. So, what is the fourth stage? The fourth stage is usually considered either sadness or depression. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't mean that it's a sign of a mental health issue or that you have a mental illness. Um, I just, I guess I want to emphasize, um, well, we all have mental health. That's a separate thing. I'm, I'm just saying it doesn't mean that you have a mental illness. Um, it's a very normal response to sudden changes. Yeah. And sadness also means, um, well, like, sometimes people have a hard time sleeping. Have you noticed that your sleep's been different for the last few weeks? Yes, it's definitely changed. Not the usual sleep pattern. Yeah, me too. Yeah, sometimes I just wake up at 3 a.m. and then I go back to sleep. Just odd. Yeah. Today was the latest I've woken up, and it was 6.50 a.m. Wow. That's the latest I've slept in in the last three weeks. Yeah, so it definitely has affected me. Sadness can also cause a change of appetite. Sometimes you're not hungry or sometimes you're eating much more. That's something you'll notice. And sometimes you just don't feel like doing anything. Yeah, your motivation is just not there. You just feel kind of meh. Those are all very common things um, during this stage of grief. Right, yeah. Plus it's okay, you know, when you finish work to just... Sit down and watch TV, you know? Right. I mean, it's, isn't that okay? Yeah, just maybe don't watch anything sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah, watch something... Yeah, watch something funny. Yeah, or heartwarming. <laughs> yep. Or do other things that you enjoy, which we'll talk more about later. Yeah. <laughs> so... The last stage of grief is acceptance. What does that look like? Uh, yeah, 
acceptance really means accepting that life as we know it is going to be different. We have to accept what's happening in the here and now. It doesn't mean you have to be okay with it. No, it just means you have to recognize that you can't control what's going on around you. And instead, you can focus on what you can control. You know, you might say, okay, well, I can keep my own self safe by staying home, okay? Or I can wash my hands to keep myself healthy and keep other people healthy as well. Mm -hmm. And you can set up your own routine and schedule, which can help you know that you got this. Yeah, plus just needing to adjust your routine now that you're at home, too. So if you reach the acceptance stage, does that mean that your quote-unquote healing is done? No, no. It's an ongoing process. Sometimes it takes intentional practice every day. It's not like you suddenly will you know, magically be over it. You have to right. keep going step by step. Yeah. And I think we should emphasize that it's okay to accept the fact that we are in crisis right now. I mean, yeah, it's tough and it can be overwhelming. Yes, absolutely. Another thing I want to add is that part of acceptance is acknowledging what our life is like mm -hmm. now and that it will become part of our history. Even when all this is over, we have to recognize that this is part of our history. It's something we will remember. You know, we'll look back and say, wow, 2020, I remember what happened that year. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with these feelings that we're having? You know, what are some of the different ways that we can deal with them? Yeah. <clears throat> well, first know that all these feelings are normal. Sadness, grief, anger... Even if you're, like, happy, that's fine. That's all normal and it's okay. And sometimes we find our mind racing, and that can be a really tough challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, um, our energy may be very up and down. Emotions can change at a moment's notice and continue changing rapidly. But... It's not good to let those emotions overwhelm you, uh, nor is it good to sweep them under the rug. You need to find a balance between the two. You know, it's important to find coping strategies to help you offset those strong emotions. Yeah, and finding that balance, oof, that sometimes can be very hard to find. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed some people get caught up in this idea that the worst case scenario is going to happen. I mean, I know in cases like that, it's really important to be in the here and now. Like say, okay, I'm home, I'm safe. Like one exercise you can do is to look for five things in the room with you and really pay attention to those details. Or even like cooking sometimes can really help keep your mind focused, you know, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that can really help with that balance. Find something that can distract you from your racing mind because those thoughts aren't helpful. Look for something to offset that. I love your example of looking for five things that you notice in the room. Um, or sometimes focusing on the five senses, like what can you see, what can you hear, what can you smell, what can you taste, and then feel, I guess. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, those are the five senses. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that can really help your mind come back to the present. Mm -hmm, yeah. Hmm. Yep. And really just taking things day by day, you know, or really even hour by hour if need be. One step at a time, yep. Yeah. So, uh, the next question, how long will it take to heal from all this? <laughs> yeah, well, there's no right or wrong answer. How many weeks? Will it be more or less? It, there's not really... The healing process looks different for everyone. Some people may need 
couple of days. Uh, some may need a few weeks. Some may need many months, and that's mm -hmm. all okay. There's no right or wrong here. Uh, it's important to know that you don't need approval from anyone else about the way that you're processing. It's your own healing process, and you can decide for yourself how you want to navigate it. It's about you. So make sure you're doing this for you. Absolutely. And there are a lot of different ways to get through that healing process as well. I mean, it's the things you can do really for your own, you know, kind of like it, like it can be just self-care. Yeah. Set a routine. I think all of us are trying to set that part up right now. Mm -hmm. One example is if you're working from home, you might think, wow, I'll just like get out of bed and just go straight to work. No, it's important mm -hmm. to have some of the same routines you did before. Take a shower, get dressed, put on makeup if you want, you know, make yourself look nice, brush your teeth, and then when you're done, go to the kitchen, make your coffee, have breakfast like normal, and then you can go into your home office and begin your work day. That kind of routine really helps a lot. Mm -hmm, What's yours? Sure. <laughs> well, it used to be that when I was just about ready to get out the door, I would brush my teeth and then leave. But now I just go ahead and do it. It's all right there. I wash my face, uh, have breakfast, um, like you said, drink my coffee. Uh, and then I come to my workspace that I've set up and know that it's, you know, time to work. And then when I'm all done with work, I can just put it aside. Plus, I still get dressed for work. I wear my work clothes, you know, during the day. And then when it's done, I change into my <laughs> kind of casual clothes. That helps my mindset. <laughs> that's awesome. Way to set up a routine that's good for you. Other things are important um, are like don't forget to drink water, have lunch, the same as you would normally. You don't need to make all these major adjustments. Keep stability. In my own workspace, I still set my lunchtime at 11, no wait, excuse me, um, 12, 12 to 1, every day, Monday through Friday. Nice. Yeah, and that period of time was the same for everyone. No one ever worked during that hour. So that's just been really helpful. Yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah, nice. Um, another thing you could do to help, another coping skill when staying at home, uh, is to clean. Cleaning can be very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Do you ever um, find yourself feeling angry or crabby or just upset? And that, you know, takes so much energy. But then when you shift that energy onto cleaning, it really yeah. brings you back down. Yeah, it can help. For sure. Mm -hmm. It really is very therapeutic. Yeah. And, like, I make my bed every day. Well, not on the weekends. Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> but that really helps my mind. Okay. You know, my mindset as well. Yeah. Good. Good. That's a good routine. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, and it's also important to stay in touch with your friends and your family. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, make sure you set aside some time for exercise. Whatever way mm -hmm. you prefer to do it. Whether it's yoga, walking, um taking the kids out for a bike ride, rollerblading. Just moving around. Yeah, or, or even just going out and playing catch with your kids. Um, if you're alone, you can do yoga. I mean, it's so cool. Nowadays, there are so many resources online. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. online. For example, my kids and I, um, this was a few weeks ago, we did this Just Dance video. Cool. Yeah, it's like three to five minutes of just moving. And who cares? No one's watching me. I don't know if I'm a good dancer or not. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So true. And, you know, you can put on headphones and just dance in your own house. Yeah. Move around. You know, yeah. You, you don't want to just sit in one place all the time. It's important to move, you know, throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah, and just doing what you want to do. I mean, 
If you want to take a nap because you're tired, you know, from working, that's okay. Take a nap. You know, you can read something, learn something new. Maybe, you know, do a new recipe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, or um, art, too. You don't have to be a skilled artist. Like, I'll show you the art journal that I use. I, I use Pinterest. Um, they have different art journal prompts that will give you different ideas of things to draw. Oh, cool. Wow, that's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, this is one of the great mindful activities you can do because you don't have to think about anything, you know? You can just focus on the, the art and it's very cool. You know how you often see those coloring books out there, mandalas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of the same idea. Really neat. So, oh, here's mine. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. This is what I color when I'm watching, like, webinars or just doing some work. I like having this. It's nice. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, there are many different ways. And... If you find that your emotions are kind of on a roller coaster, that's okay. It's okay. It's it's okay to just take a step back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't pressure yourself. Right. Right. If you feel like you want to cry, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Or if you're feeling like really aggravated, you know, like throw a ball or, or like a pillow. <laughs> or use a squeeze ball if you have one. Right. Yeah, that's a good one too. Mm-hmm. Or just take the ball and, like, bounce it against the wall repeatedly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus, if you have a therapist, go ahead and use them. Or, you know, talk to your friends and let them know if you need someone to listen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important to have someone that you feel comfortable with to express your emotions. You don't need mm -hmm. to do this alone and hold it all in. That's not healthy. Yeah, I really encourage you to get those feelings out with someone that you're comfortable with and someone who knows you well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Plus, and I'd like to add some things from the article that we read say, you know, don't try too hard. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, wow. Being home is great. I'm getting so much done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. And it's okay to just not feel like you have to get all that done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, leave it. Sit and rest. You know, that's okay. If you're just kind of getting by, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, yeah. yeah. Plus, if, you know, you feel like you don't have enough resources, connect with your children's school. Or with the community, or you know, even your church. You know, just be in touch with others to see what they have to offer. <laughs> That's an awesome tip. Yeah, and I would add on to that um, for parents with kids who are at home. I totally get it. I'm a parent of two children, a sixth and third grader, and you know, I thought. Um, okay, I got this. The first day seemed okay. And then the second day started feeling a little weird. And now I admit, now it's really disrupted things. Um, yeah, now like I find myself, you know, just looking at Facebook or just hearing from different parents that it's all okay. Go easy on each other and go easy on your children. It's, this is not uh, something that you can magically fix. It's a process, and it's a new change for all of us. You just mm -hmm. have to find the balance. Yeah, if you're not doing too much right now, that's okay. You can do more tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And as a single person, you know, wow, it's mm -hmm. really tough. Mm -hmm. I yeah. tell myself to you know, go challenge. for a walk and, you mm -hmm. know, get on to a group text chat with, like, friends. You know, one of my friends set up one of those, um, uh, what's it called, uh, like house party app. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know exactly what that was, but okay, I'm learning. <laughs> and so that's kind of cool. So yeah, it's, it's just important to stay in touch with friends and family as well, you know? Yeah, it's amazing the world that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. Technology is such a blessing to be able to so talk true. with people that way. 
Yeah, or play games. I mean, yeah, there's such a wow. variety of options. For instance, last night my husband was playing poker, and I was like <laughs> trying to figure out what he was doing. So I watched for a bit, and sure enough, he had an online poker game with a bunch cool. of different participants who were all playing the game at the same time. So cool. Yeah, that's nice. It's a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to add? Um, just go easy on yourself and on each other. Uh, if you need to reach out, do it. We're here for each other. And, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, you know, we're all just taking it one day at a time. There's no perfect answer of what you should be doing right now. Take it step by step, and if you do something wrong, tomorrow's a new day. Right. So true. Well, thank you for sharing your time today. Yeah, thank you, Maggie, for inviting me. Appreciate yeah. it.